Alright. Alright. Hey everybody, this is Frankie Slauson, and welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, and today I got a guest with me who is who is the brother of the Macho Man Randy Savage, and as you know, would know him as the genius from the days of the WWF, I give you Mr. Lanny Poffo. How's it going? Well, I just turned 58 years old, I'm doing pretty well, and um, still living in the past. A genius full of glory and renown. <laughs> Yeah, and it's kind of it's kind of cool that you you can go back and you know nowadays thanks to YouTube and everything we can kind of go back and look at some of your classic matches from back in the day. Well, I'd appreciate it if you go on geniuslannypoffo.com dot com because I have selective amnesia. Some of the matches on YouTube I choose to forget, oh. but all the matches on on my website I want to remember. Oh sure, oh sure. Are there any personal favorites that you ever uh, of yours? some of the matches that you have on your site? Yes, uh, of course, my match with Hulk Hogan on NBC, and my appearance on Regis Philbin, and my poem that I recited to coronate the King, Macho King Randy Savage, were uh, my top three picks, and then everything else, uh, you know, is self-explanatory. <laughs> And uh, being the the brother of, of uh, the late Macho Man Randy Savage, I suppose, uh, did you ever wish that uh, you could have gotten like a, a like a t title shot at all? Like I know your Macho, or I know your brother, you know, was a former heavyweight champion. Uh, how come they never gave you the heavyweight title? Well, I never asked questions like that. I just did the very best with what they gave me at the time, and. Uh, you know, I realized that I wasn't the booker, I was just a wrestler. So it's either um, eat it or starve, and I decided to eat it. Thankfully, I decided to save it. That way, I instead of being a uh, main event jabroni, I'm a jabroni that's a main eventer now. Yeah, and uh, and it's it's cool just to know that uh, that that uh, you've had a legacy that has built with your family in wrestling, and. Uh, uh, what was life like growing up uh, in those days uh, before you were a pro wrestler and then after you got into the business? Well, I was the youngest in the family, and all I can say is if I were sensitive about anything, I would have hung myself in my room many years ago. So I can take a joke, <laughs> and uh, being the little brother of the macho man made me tough, so I can handle anybody now. Once you've been the Macho Man's little brother, you can take anybody. <laughs> and and uh, so, well, was it uh, tough for you to get into the business, or was it uh, or something that you always were passionate about? Uh, because my father was a little papo, a professional wrestler, uh -huh. it was much easier for me to do wrestling business than people know that I had to pay money to some shark that called himself wrestling school. Uh huh. And how did that go for you? What do you mean? Like uh, when you started uh, like tr training and like uh, like having like your first uh, few matches in a professional setting. Well, uh, afterwards there was constructive criticism time, and uh, I tried to hone my craft as best I could. Finally, getting a gimmick and trying to produce in this business, and uh, like I say. I was luckier than most because uh, getting in, you know, I see so many young talent and they pay their money to wrestling schools. Some of them are scrupulous, some of them are not. And uh, usually they mostly just care about themselves. So what do you uh, what do you think of the business t uh, today compared to how it was like uh, when you were wrestling? Well, the truth is I don't watch it. Um, I don't watch wrestling. I watch baseball, and it's not that I am ungrateful of wrestling. I'm very grateful. It's just that uh, I am retired now, and I like to spend my time. I don't watch TV. I have Roku. Are you familiar? Yeah, yeah, uh, I am familiar with that. So um, in, uh, instead of just watching television, I just watch what I want to watch, and uh, I feel like I have more control of things. Oh yeah, it's it's nice because uh, the whole on-demand thing makes everything so much better compared to what it was like 30 years ago when we didn't even have any of that stuff. 
Right, and uh, not when you when you called me, I was watching Mad Men. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope I didn't bother you too much. I was just kind of, I was just actually surprised that you responded back because uh, you know, you're, you're you know I consider you a big name in the business regardless because you know I, I was a big fan not only of just some of your brothers but I'm a, I'm a fan of classic wrestling and I and I just think it's just kind of cool that uh, most rest or even even today how social media uh, how you're able to just yourself run your own Facebook page and actually be as yourself rather than having like an agent uh, do your work for you or whatever if you uh, had an interview request or whatever. Right, and the only thing bad about it is uh, that was 5,000 minimum or maximum, and uh, that's why I prefer to be contacted through my website, GeniusLandingPopple.com. Okay, yeah, that's probably the way I probably should have done it, but I, I, I figure I'd try Facebook first, and if anything didn't work, then I would go the second route. <laughs> But uh, you're, you're just a couple of years ago, or actually it'll be a couple of years in, in May, uh, we, we all uh, suffered the loss, and, and I'm pretty sure you suffered the most just because he was your brother, of, uh, of the death of the Macho Man Randy Savage. How did that impact you after uh, after you found out what happened? It was May 20th, 2011, and if I can say something good about it, my father died about a year before. Okay. And I, I'm glad he got a chance to miss that because unfortunately, uh, my mother survived. And that's, that's something you don't want to have to see. I wish you could take my brain out and scrub it, you know, rinse it, scrub it, and wash it, and get rid of those memories of having to watch my mother view her firstborn son in the casket. That was a nightmare. And. You know, I'm trying to be strong for her, but who's going to be strong for me? Yeah. Yeah, and, and and death is never a good thing, no matter who it is. And, and it's just kind of surprising that uh, after all these years that, uh, you know, to, to hear about something like that, and to, to have a tragic end that way, when, the, when uh, Randy was only, what, he was like, what, two years? Was he like your age when he died, about 58? Right. He, he'd be 60 now if he had lived. He was 58 and a half, and now I'm finally catching up with him. I'm 58 on December 28th. So, um, yeah, I finally got six more months to go when I've caught up with him. And um, he was uh, definitely a large part of my life, and uh, he is very, very missed. And uh, when it comes to the wrestling business, uh, uh, do, you, do you wonder why... He and yourself have not never been inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame at all. Well, exactly. Um, if you want to know the exact reason, I gave that in. There's a thing called kfabecommentaries.com, uh -huh. and I gave an hour and a half explanation. We talked about it, but let me give you a brief rundown. Sure. Uh, first of all, they never ever ever asked him when he was alive. Uh -huh. And he made his feelings quite clear. After the Von Erichs got into the Hall of Fame, he says, that's the way I want to go in. You know, even Chris gets to be in the Hall of Fame. You know, Angelo, little brother Lanny, and the Macho Man. Yeah, that's the way I want to do it. And he made it very clear that that was his wishes. And they never asked for him in the Hall of Fame until posthumously, until he died. And... I gave him the request, you know, the, listen, we didn't cremate him against his will, and I'm definitely not going to allow him to go on the Hall of Fame against his will. So, I, they asked me, you know, what I thought of inducting my brother into the Hall of Fame, and I told him, uh, it's the Popple family or nothing, and I guess it's nothing, so I'm not going to bend, they're not going to bend, so the Macho Man will never be in the Hall of Fame unless somebody bends, and it's not going to be me. Um, my mother wouldn't hear of it. But, you know, before we cast our judgment, go on com. look for the Lanny Popo K-Fade Commentary, and uh, there was some bad blood. Let me just go over it briefly. Sure. Um, it was November 16, 1987. They did a battle royal in the Meadowlands in New Jersey, East uh -huh. Rutherford, New Jersey, and... All the old-timers were there, Killer Kowalski, J. 
Gene Chinesky, Bobo Brazil, Jay Strongbow, Arnold Spolins, Pat O'Connor, Lou Fez, and my dad, Edward Brother. Is there any way you could get me on the card? And Randy says, don't worry, leave it to me. And he went to the powers that be, and he was rejected. And my dad was not allowed in that battle royal, and it, my brother put a chip on his shoulder, and he kept it there the rest of his life. Wow. And, you know, and uh, Randy was not the kind of guy to forgive and forget. Randy was a mountain out of a molehill. I'm more water off a duck's back. But it bothered him the rest of his life that he was not able to do that. And keep in mind, Randy's the same guy that wrestled Jake the Snake Roberts and allowed himself to be bitten by a king cobra, a poisonous snake. It was devenomized, but he still suffered 103 fever. So don't tell me that Randy didn't give, 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 give to the business. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I, I remember that too because they, they showed the footage here on like a, a compilation DVD. I think it was before like a SummerSlam or something like that or WrestleMania or so, somewhere around that time anyway. Yeah, you know, and your brother really, I mean, he, he built a legacy for himself. And uh, is there any other, like, Hall of Fame that he's been a part of or that you've been a part of that uh, while everybody was alive in your family? Yeah, there's been several, and uh, but this is the big one. And it's a little smaller because he's not in it. And uh, I even uh, got a chance to interview my mother who verifies my story that uh, Randy, this is the way he wanted it. And uh, like I say, uh, if you don't believe me or you do believe me, go on com, and you'll see that I'm not being selfish. I am being honoring my brother and his wishes. And, and, and you're doing a good job by doing that. I mean, uh, I tell you what, you know, I I wouldn't let any uh, anybody talk me out of that, you know, that's for sure. If that's if that was his wishes, then that... that let it rest, I guess. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, and I got one more thing to say about that, that nobody in Connecticut gave me condolences except one guy. His name is Howard Finkel, and he's the mentioned. Unfortunately, nobody else seems to be. But, um, you know, I'm, what do you think of that? Even if you're glad he's dead, express your condolences. It's just typical and normal, and... Emily Post would agree that that's what you do when somebody dies. Oh, yeah. I mean, let, let put bygones to the side or whatever. I mean, even Hulk Hogan, uh, you know, sent his condolences. And I don't know what the story was between them two, if it was actually real or kayfabe or whatever, but at least he was mad enough to uh, to uh, send out his uh, condolences to, to Randy. Yeah, and, uh, and, and he, he was very nice to me, too. Um, I saw him about a month later in the airport, and he gave me a nice hug, and uh, he was uh, very sincere, and, um, you know, there's all water under the bridge. Um, I don't, my goal is to live to be 100 or die trying, <laughs> and I want to have for, forgiveness in my heart. I don't want to be angry, I don't want to be angry, all that, but I am going to honor my brother's wishes, and, um, you know, there was a lot of things that went on. Uh, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, uh -huh. you know, but the thing is, I'm appreciative for what this business gave me, and, you know, that's the way I feel about it. So, what are, what is it that you're doing currently? Because I, I went on your Facebook page and said you're like a, a motivational speaker or something like that. Can you want to talk about that? Yes, yeah. yeah, so I wrote a book about smoking, and um, three smokers with nothing to do decided to go to a zoo. If they lit up the smoke, I heard one monkey joke, hey, look, human see, human do. When Columbus arrived at our store, he discovered tobacco galore. The peace pipe was passed, although peace didn't last. The pipe killed more people than war. So that's just two of 335 limericks I wrote called Limericks from the Heart and Lungs. It's all about smoking. It's all for the children. And it's not just that, but I go to... For example, um, I introduced Ted Williams in 1991. I said, to all of the magnificence that is Joe Robbie Stadium, the Marlins and the Dolphins' happy home, it gives me pride to introduce a man who was to baseball 
when Romulus and Remus were to roam. Take 95 until you hit the Massachusetts Turnpike. Get off at Fenway Park and there you are. Or back in 1941, this man hit 406. And even now, Ted Williams has no par. America anticipated every turn of bat to watch him knock the ball to smithereens. 521 home runs are even more incredible because he gave five years to the Marines. The boys who wrote the sports page never did him any favors, but for Cooperstown, they had to tell the truth that Theodore Samuel Williams brought a splendor to the game, reminiscent of the late George Herman Ruth. And he started crying, and he hugged me, and he said, if I'd have had you for a press agent, I'd have never had any problems. <laughs> no, that's that's good. That's, uh, wow, I I, I got I almost got emotional there myself. <laughs> that's deep. Are you from uh, Are you from Minnesota? Yeah, I'm uh, born and raised in northern Minnesota, so I'm like 20 miles from the Canadian border. Well, I'm going to be this summer. I'm going to be in. Uh, I've already wrestled in Thunder Bay several times. And I'm going to be in, uh, let's see, uh, Niagara Falls. Uh, are you near Duluth? Uh, yeah, about four hours away, about. Well, it's a little, I'm from Chicago originally, uh -huh. so that stuff's a little too cold for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I'm sure you got nice weather uh, over in Florida than we do here. Right now we got like below uh, zero temperatures over here. <laughs> About 80 degrees here. Jeez. How'd you get so lucky? <laughs> well, I, I made a wish. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that's that's great. I've never been down to Florida. The The farthest I've ever been to where it's, like, really nice or whatever is the West Coast, uh, a little town called Astoria, Oregon, where the Goonies were, the movie The Goonies were filmed, and beautiful over there. I've never been to California or worldwide. I'm sure in your in your travels you've been worldwide probably numerous times probably. I'll tell you what, if you don't want to get it beat up, it's Oregon, not Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. I, <laughs> I pronounce it funny. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's real sensitive. Yeah. I got that a lot when I made my documentary over there uh, about the about my trip and everything, and I put it on YouTube, and yeah, I got a little conductism, but it's okay. I, I, I get it. <laughs> But like with you, I mean, you got you you travel around the world uh, when you're in wrestling, and, and how far do you travel now uh, while you're doing the motivational speaking? Um, actually, I just came back from Chicago. Uh, the superintendent of schools is Dr. Thomas Livingston, and he brought me in, and uh, I spoke to six schools, three in his district and three in a neighboring district, and you know we've. Uh, he also ordered a bunch of my smoking books for the children, and um, we had a very good time. And uh, I basically, I will go wherever I'm asked because I'm in this world to, there's two dynamics, how may I serve and what's in it for me. And I'm all about how may I serve, that's why I live in abundance. If you say what's in it for me, you live in scarcity. So what do you, uh, do you, do you think you'll ever need to be, uh, to go over to Newtown, Connecticut, where they had that shooting last month? Um, no, I don't think I'm going to go there. Uh, if they asked me, I would, but, uh, I also think that they use these things as an excuse to take away our rights. Uh -huh. You see, they got the Second Amendment down the line now. And I wrote a little poem for... President Obama, it's a love poem. Are you ready? Sure. There once was a man named Barack. He lied to his gullible flock. For the national debt, he has no regret, because he's still blaming Bush. What a crock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's that's pretty good, I tell you. I know, I, you know, and, and I don't mean to be off subject or anything, but, you know, to me, when it comes to politics, and, and I don't know, I mean, it, it's like... It's like, who do you trust? You know, who who's going to make a difference? I tell you who I trust. I trust Ron Paul. Uh huh. I've heard that. I've heard and his name before. Any, I don't trust any Democrats or Republicans because they are all they are both the same. They are bribed. Their special interests come in and they uh, they lobby, they bribe, and they uh, make donations to their elections. The purpose of a politician is to win elections. They don't love you. 
Uh, we exist only to uh, serve our government. But anyway, um, why get it mitigated for me? Just to, just uh, go on YouTube and look at Ron Paul's speeches, and uh, he's the only one with the Constitution in mind. Yeah, it's one of the good guys anyway. Like like they thought like Ross Perot would probably be one of the good guys. I don't know. I don't really mean to make this a political interview. It's supposed to be about you, not about political. <laughs> but hey, it, it sounds like you're a multilingual guy, and you know that you type of guy that can talk about anything. You know, which is cool. You know? I loved it when, I loved it when Ross Perot said, "Hey, I'm all ears." <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, because it's big ears. That was the pun of the joke, there, there folks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh... Yeah, he, he beat you. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I just said he he beat you to the joke, you know what I mean? It's like, they've been laughing at his ears, and he says, well, that's all right, I'm all ears. <laughs> Can I finish? Can I finish? So, the last question I have for you, before I let you go, and it involves wrestling, but but I want to hear, like, your, since you are a former, or a former wrestler for WWF and on all the other territories that you wrestled for, what advice would you have for somebody... Uh, one of the viewers or whoever who would like to be an up-and-coming wrestler, what advice would you give? Okay, three letters. S-Y-M. Save your money. Oh, okay. Because when they're, when they're done with you, they are done with you. They're done with you, they're done with you. And just don't think they love you. They're done with you. So if you don't save your money, I'm afraid you're going to wind up like... Uh, the government says now, and you say, I'm Flair, and the government says, I don't care. And then you go, woo, or whatever. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> woo! I can't, I can't do it. I shouldn't try. Yeah. But um, in a real job, they take your money, and they give it to the government uh, when it's still on your paycheck. So you really can't get in much trouble. But when you're an independent contractor, you have to save your money just to pay your taxes. And if you can't do it, uh, then you get in serious trouble, and that's where a lot of wrestlers find themselves, because they have no discipline. And uh, the other thing is, I never smoked, drank, or did drugs, and I saved my money, and that's why I'm in the condition I'm in today. That's why, if the phone rings, I answer it, but I don't have to make any calls. Uh -huh. That means, by that I mean I, I am retired. <laughs> You've lived your life. Now you're ta now you're going to enjoy it. The rest of it. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, that, but if the phone rings and somebody has a booking for me, uh, if it's someplace I want to go and the money, if the price is right, I'll be there tonight. Huh. Okay. Well, cool. Well, I tell you what, Larry, I I really do appreciate you taking the time. I'm I'm sorry this was so spontaneous off the cuff, but uh, I'm glad we were able to communicate and everything and. Uh, uh, this means a lot to me, man. You're 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 a legend. I don't care what anybody says. You're a legend. You know. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you very much. I'm going to go back to uh, Roku now, and uh, you guys have a have a good night. And thanks for a hell of an interview. All right, man. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. And that was Leap and Lanny Poffo, aka the genius, aka Macho Man Randy Savage's brother, younger brother, aka. Just simply, Lanny Poffo. I want to take the time to thank him for uh, letting me interview him for a few minutes. And well, we're already at 23 minutes already, or 47 seconds. But it was a real good opportunity to to get a chance to talk to him and to learn about the business a little bit. To kind of find out the the, the key as to why his brother was never inducted to the Hall of Fame, and and unfortunately it may never happen as far as the WWF Hall of Fame goes, or WWE, I should say to be politically correct. But anyway, I want to say thank you to Lanny for just letting me do the interview, and uh, he's my 27th guest, and uh, the next interview that I will have will be, uh, well, it's going to be a surprise if I haven't said it already, but I just hope you guys, uh, in the next interview, enjoy your Frost's Flakes, and that's the only clue I'm going to give. It has something to do with Frost's Flakes and pro wrestling, but you'll find out who in the next interview. Anyway, I'm Frankie Slauson, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.